Welcome back YouTubers to another TNA review with the British Fist and that is Mr. Parkin and me and Joe. But before we, get in, before we get into this review, please make sure you subscribe up above, like this video and please leave your thoughts about this TNA show in the comment section below. Okay, now what did we open up with that? All I want to say is this. Um... Is this what you follow up your biggest fucking pay-per-view of the year of TNA? Fucking hell, this show pissed me off tonight. God damn. Oh, yeah. we open up the show with a 45-minute segment with four fucking commercials. I was watching this TNA and I was just thinking, okay, I'm expected to see the winners and losers of their matches at Bound for Glory. But the opener, the opener did give us them, but not in a positive way. Um, you know, I can understand them starting off with Sting. Um, you know, he has got control of the company now. He comes out without his gear on, which was nice to see, especially if he's going to be in this authority figure, like he said. He talks about getting the company back in the rightful hands, and he's glad to be bringing back the real Hulk Hogan. Um... And, you know, he, he brings out Hulk Hogan, basically. He gets a nice pop, a nice reaction from the crowd, like he did about the glory. And talks about how he'd been doing the wrong for the last couple of years and chose to follow instead of lead. And, MJ, what happened after this? Who came yeah. out? After Hogan left the ring, out comes Dixie Carter. Can I say one thing? The holster brother believes MJ is an essential part of the British fist and he's going to put him over, brother, because the stinger... The Gen J is the only person that Hogan's putting over, brother. The 58 year old's putting over a 52 year old, brother. Oh, God. This promo was 45 minutes long. Um, and was such a clusterfuck. You had Sting coming out, Dixie Carter coming well, Hogan coming out, Dixie Carter coming out, saying Sting is now the new authority figure of this show. Then you have Angle coming out. Saying that, well, he pretty much buries Rude, said that he beat him at the pay per view, blah, blah, blah. Bobby Rude comes out, says that he's pissed off and prophetic, and that the angle is prophetic and screwed him. And then James Storm comes out, says, Thigh about your damn luck. And I like, I like these two guys on the mic, but after this, I couldn't fucking care because we're already 25 minutes into the fucking segment! And what I'm gonna say is that the show went on. It had the importance of like Sting and Hogan because that should have been the main event for Battle for Glory, and they just dragged it on with these other segments. Instead of spacing out throughout the night, they had it all in one go, and that made it come up to forty-five minutes. So to be honest, I think they should have just split it out over the night. Whatever. Sting makes the title match tonight, as Angle said that there is a clause in the contract that Bobby Roode can't get a rematch. So Sting makes Bobby uh, Kurt Angle versus James Storm. For the world, for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, we'll talk about that one later, brother. But this segment, will I dragged on for so fucking long, I don't know what the fuck. We have clusterfuck everything. The way this was, this was TNA's answer to following their biggest fucking pay per view of the year. Well, this was it. Was it a fucking forty-five minute segment with four fucking commercials? The thing I'm going to say about this segment is that wrestling's meant to matter and 45 minutes into the show, you don't have any wrestling match, you just have talk, talk, talk from all the people that seem to matter in TNA. There were six minutes of wrestling tonight! Is this wrestling matters? What the... What the fuck?! This this show got me fucking out. And this is the shit we were getting back in February. This whole show was a fucking shit. This is the shit we'll get back in February when TNA was at its fucking shittest. It's been getting better. But this show reminds me of what it was fucking like before lockdown. Fucking, what, six and a half minutes of wrestling? Too much talking? What more can we say about this opener? My god, it got the job done, but in 45 minutes! The opener hyped up the main event, but it didn't really hype up any <sighs> of the rivalry of the feud. It just hyped up the <sighs> main guys as TNA seemed to look at it, but again... This did give us a good taste for the rest of the show. No, a third of your show is taken up in an opening segment. My God. My fucking God. Should we move on to the next match? Next we, well, match the, 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 the first match, match of the night. We have Winter and Angelina versus Teshmaka and Tara in a knockouts tag team championship match. The night after Winter has just lost her knockouts championship, we have a match which in which has a title which is totally 
completely irrelevant for Bound for Glory because the, the you know, it just wasn't involved at Bound for Glory. Why are they following up with this? I'm just saying, where's the logic in following up Bound for Glory with this match? Because you had the fate of Four Way or the tag, whatever you want to call it, at uh, Bound for Glory, and then this follows, and to be honest, I don't see why these two actually deserve this match. They should be going after Mickey James or Velvet Sky. It totally defies logic. I mean, fucking hell. First of all, doesn't Winter get a rematch? Second of all, like you said, why are these getting a title shot? You know, why did Winter get pinned in this match as the former knockout champion who they didn't parade on TV like a fucking champion before Bound for fucking Glory? And, uh, you know, this wasn't even that bad of a match. No. Like, it's just three and a half minutes. I found, it hard. I found it hard to get into. Just, again, you say it was a bad match. I don't like it. And the thing is that this match should not even taken place. It didn't really have a follow-on from the pay-per-view. So I'm thinking exactly. you had, like, uh, Winter and Angelina who should have followed on to Velvet Sky. But, no. And guys, just before, I apologise for being angry in this video, but it fucking pisses me off when TNA does things like that. I try and defend TNA. You've heard me try and defend TNA, right? But I cannot defend TNA on this show. You know, this match shouldn't even take place. You know, but I, 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 we'll go on to the next segment, shall we? Because it doesn't get much fucking better. No. Jeff fucking Jarrett comes out. He has a promo with, Matt, with Jeff Hardy. Yes, I can understand. They're having a feud at Turning Point. But what we saw in this segment, we saw on Bound for Glory. Why didn't they take the segment from Bound for fucking Glory and put it on this TV show rather than a two and waste all that fucking time at Bound for Glory? When I look at this, I'm thinking, again, this didn't actually announce anything. This didn't actually alert us to anything. All they basically did was repeat their words at Bound for Glory saying, get out and keep on walking, don't come back. And she probably ended up Battering the head out of him, out comes security. It just comes all one big mess. Not, not, not positive. The main event was rushed at Bound for Glory because of that fucking segment they had on Bound for Glory. Why didn't they just put this that here? Why? Because Jeff fucking Jarrett needs his spotlight and he's having a feud with fucking Jeff, Jeff Hardy so he can have star get involved with another fucking TNA star. My God. Oh, you have anything more to say about this segment? D'Lo Brown and Al Snow was the fucking highlight of this segment. My God. Yeah, <sighs> again, I don't quite understand this. Again, I know Jeff Jarrett wants his part in every show. Now he's here. But to be honest, Jeff Hyde and Jeff Jarrett, I really couldn't care less. No, it looks like they're going to be having a match at Turning Point. It was just a carbon copy of what we got on Bound for Glory. And that is why I'm so pissed off. I'm sorry, again, NJ, I do apologise to you that I'm angry here. I just, this really pissed me off. Um... You know, what more can you say, really? That it hardly beats on Jeff Jarrett, and it's just a carbon, carbon copy of what happened about the glory. Well, you know, just why was it there? I don't know. Um, we get a backstage segment with Robbie E and Eric Young. It looks like they're doing a TV title feud between Robbie E and Eric Young again. And my question is, no one gives a fucking shit. Why are you doing this? And also, while you're at it, TNA, why are you introducing Jersey Shore stars to a wrestling show? Any thoughts on this? Again, bringing in big TV people, so for some reason it's popular in the US, this Jersey Shore thing, so I think seeing them on another popular show in the US, which is TNA, I think they're going to somehow boost up ratings, but when it comes to Jersey Shore, I couldn't care. Adding Eric Young to the screen, all I can say is, TNA, fuck you. Gunner versus Abyss. My God. Two guys that weren't on the pay-per-view... Why is this match following up from Bound for Glory? You know, I can understand. They're trying to make a bit of face. But, I mean, this match did its job. But it just wasn't needed. Can they not put something better on a follow-up show? What are your, th what are your thoughts on this? I, I know mine. Well, it's, it's, it was good to see Abyss there dominate. But again, it didn't turn out to be much of a match because Gunner runs away. And I'm thinking, yes, you're following on the whole Immortal attacking Abyss thing. But again... This is not a essential part of Bound for Glory that shouldn't have followed on. So it looks like Abyss is in our face. After two minutes, Gunner pretty much runs away and gets himself counted out. So, yeah, yeah that, that was it. We then had a segment with Velvet Sky. A lot of segments tonight, TNA. I'll give them that. They did a lot of segments. Um, 
It kind of makes sense, though, as she is the new champion, and she is pretty decent on the mic. So she comes out, talks about her emotional win, starts putting on the fake tears, until what? Heat-sucking son of a bitch comes out. NJ, who was it? Who came out? It was Jer Karen Jarrett, but what I'll say is that, to be honest, as much as she is the new champion, I really wanted someone to come and shut her up. No, oh, to be honest, it really shouldn't have... Karen Jarrett pretty much comes out, hogs the mic! Why are they introducing Karen Jarrett in the knockout title thing, period? Just saying. Um, she holds all the mic time, she brings out Madison Rain, and then Gail Kim, you know, nostalgia for that, Gail Kim comes out and attacks Velvet Sky. So it looks like we're going to have something to do with Velvet Sky and Gail Kim. But why is Karen Jarrett getting so much mic time in the segment? It was quite horrible to see, but the way I would have done this is when Karen Jarrett said that your next opponent is older pad, um, Velvet's going to look up the ramp and then from Gail Kim to come yeah. up behind and attack and Gail Kim to be the next yeah. opponent. I didn't mind Gail Kim attacking Velvet Sky. It's just, um, you know, I just don't, just, just Karen Jarrett pisses me off. I'm just, I just, sorry, this, this impact pissed me off so much. And once again, I apologise for my anger, guys, but my God. Um, we then have the Hogan and Immortal segment. You know, because Hogan has to be on the show twice. Um, Again, like, what is this advancing? I really don't know. Um, first of all, when Eric Bischoff comes out with Immortal, why is Eric Bischoff's music playing? Why is Immortal's music not playing as they're all coming out? That's my first question. I mean, I've been into this. I moment. guess this is gradually coming to the end of Immortal now. Immortal Good. are going to be breaking up, and it's just Good. the si simple little hint we're getting on Hogan. Um, Bischoff calls out Hogan, and we get that little conversation between them two, and then Sting and Hogan team up with baseball bats because they're now best buddies. And Immortal run away. And then Bischoff's son is at the top of the ramp. And then, what I'm wondering, why are they introducing Bischoff's son into this whole thing? Oh my god, um, fuck him out. You know, and Bischoff's son punches Bischoff, and he was pretty ripped for a referee, wasn't he? <laughs> pretty strong indeed. And again, that just dragged on a little bit as it got on. I was just saying, next, I don't really care about this part. No, I, I, I must admit, NJ, I'm pretty calm now. I'm pretty calm. I've calmed down. Um, yeah, this segment really wasn't needed, in my opinion. Especially not the Hogan, especially not Bischoff's son part. Um, no. Yeah. Should we move on to the main event? Yeah, it's just based Bischoff just having his say against mm. Hogan, yeah. saying he doesn't like it and how he, he ruined it and everything. Will yeah. this potentially set up a, a maybe attack match at pay per view? Who played with yeah. Mortal Wednesday and Hogan? Maybe? That's what it looks like in that, but two on two, something, I'm pretty sure. And then we get to the main event. Now, this is what we're going to have a lot to because this, the whole thing, was based on this spoiler. We have Kurt Angle versus James Storm in a match for the World Heavyweight Championship. And cutting to the chase, this match lasts one minute. Yes, one minute. And James Storm wins the title. And while I'm happy that James Storm wins this title, you know, it just defies logic. The way TNA are doing this. I mean, my God. Do you, do you get your thought? I want to know your thoughts on this because you didn't you, you didn't read the spoiler. What no, did you think? I kept I kept away from it because I was thinking, okay, I'm just going to hope they can put on a good show for us. When it came to this match, I look at it thinking Bobby Roode should be in this match. He should get his rematch. Yeah. But they had the old, you know stupid clause thing that they yeah. spoke at the beginning. And I just thought, oh, pretty poor, appalling. This one minute match is even worse than the opener because to be honest. For a main event, you expect a lot of action, a lot of time. And this just didn't get anything. Angle got beat in a minute, so that Bobby Roode couldn't do. And mm. I just didn't like it. Yeah. It just didn't flow. I know Angle was injured, but my God, how am I supposed to believe that James Storm, I'm glad he won the title, how am I supposed to believe that he wins the title in one fucking minute? This is even worse than that whole Sting and Jeff Hardy fucking piece of shit they had when Sting returned. Oh my God. Um, You know, why... This really shows, why did they give Bobby Roode all that build-up for this? And it's such an injustice to James Storm. Because he's a good guy. He's a great wrestler. He does, he. If they were going to make him win the title, if Hogan didn't think Roode was ready, why did Bobby Roode win the title? Why did they build him up like that to have this happen? And it is a complete injustice to James Storm. I'm sorry, it's a complete injustice. I think... To be honest, yes, there's that big, great celebration at the end. But the thing, uh, the way I'm looking at it now, trying to find a positive out of this, we all said a few weeks back that we're going to have a beer money versus each other. Yeah. I think now that we're out of that uh, angle clause for his contract thing, mm. we can now have James Storm versus Bobby Roode for the TNA Championship. Which I would like you would want to see. Definitely. So at least it's leading to that. But my God, 
another free TV title win right after Bound for Glory. So we've just paid to see that world title match, which was built up brilliantly. Bobby Roode was built up brilliantly. His time to win was Bound for Glory. Right after that pay-per-view on free TV, they changed the title to James Storm. What can fucking booking is this? This is how you know Vince Russo and Bischoff and the WCW X guys at Bischoff are still booking this fucking show. Because this is... I don't mind Roode winning. The whole celebration thing was good. But it's just the way this has happened. It's such an injustice to James Storm. And my God, I feel so sorry for Bobby Roode. Hogan comes out at the last minute and says he's not ready. And this is what he gets. Yeah, my God. Yeah, James Storm had to be in the ring celebrating yeah. with Bobby Roode at his side. I'm thinking Bobby Roode's really not liking this. Even though he's celebrating that. Uh, I just thought, again, not the best TNA ending. No, not really. And not the best fucking follow-up to their biggest pay-per-view of the year, really, was it? It was probably one of the worst shows I've seen since February. I'm not even joking there. Because following on from the pay-per-view, there, really there was a lot we didn't get to see. We don't get to see a follow-up of maybe yeah. Anderson and Bully Ray, the uh, X Division, again, the tag. Yeah. Exactly. So there's Nothing. a lot missing. And oh. to be honest, they just concentrated on Daigle, the main eventers, mm -hmm. more than the other matches. And I thought that was pretty sad. Right. Overall thoughts then. Um, you know, this really did remind me of the shit we got from DNA back in February. We got ten, we got like six minutes of wrestling, way too many segments. This was a shit follow on. The opening segment was 45 minutes. The main event, we had James Storm winning the title in one minute. Um, you know, th this show sucked. I'm giving this fucking show an F. Because it fucking sucked. I don't know, you, you, your thoughts. I just, I can't give this anything other than that. It was well, so shit. I'll pick some good out of it, like the whole main event, what's that going to probably lead to? They had a little bit to follow, not too much importance. So I'm going to probably give it a D minus. Okay. Um, is that is that all? Or? I didn't really enjoy it, but I did find some positive in it, mm. and it did find a little bit, so D minus is all I'm going to give it. Yeah, well, at least you're looking at it from a better perspective than I'm looking at it, because I'm just really pissed off with TNA, especially with it, because I want TNA to do well. And when I see this, it just pisses me off. Um, if you guys are there, if you have any thoughts on this show, get them in that comment section below. But one thing we will do, though, we will toast James Storm, because he is a great wrestler, and he does deserve that championship. So to James Storm... Yeah. Money! Money! Exactly. So we'll taste, we'll toast James Storm there, even though we're not beer drinkers. But um, get your comments down below, of course. And that has been it for Mr. Parkin. Angry Parkin. <laughs> me and Jay. Thank you for tuning for this TNA show, and goodbye.